in the attachment of T fascia and arrangement of T fascia within the thigh to discuss the location of stiffness opening and its relations to discuss the attachment of inguinal ligament and to discuss the clinical conditions associated with the deep fascia of thigh so going to the deep fascia of thigh before discussing the deep fascia we should go through the definition of fascia what is fascia so the fascia is actually the connective tissue covering that is binding these structures together within the body so whenever connective tissue covering uh, connective tissue is binding these structures and covering them it is called fascia so we are having two categories in the fascia we are having superficial fascia and then we are having deep fascia so superficial fascia is also called subcutaneous tissue so here we are having the superficial fascia which is shown here so the superficial fascia is lying deep to the skin and it is adherent to the dermis with the help of fibers and as you can see it can contain variable amount of fat so this is the superficial fascia or the subcutaneous tissue in the thigh the superficial fascia is continuous with the fascia in the inferior lateral abdominal wall while below at the knee this is uh, this fascia is blending with the deep fascia of the leg so this is the superficial fascia of the thigh can see or the subcutaneous tissue which is lying in between the skin and the deep fascia so this is the superficial fascia coming to the deep fascia deep fascia is more strong and inelastic it is lying in between the subcutaneous tissue and the muscles so this is shown as deep fascia in the thigh deep fascia is called fascia lata as you can see here fascia lata so deep fascia of thigh is called fascia lata it is more uh, strong and inelastic in thigh as it has to limit the expansion of strong thigh muscles during their contraction so it has to be more tough so that's why in the thigh it is strong and inelastic and in the thigh deep fascia is called fascia lata so fascia lata is the deep fascia of thigh here if you see this is the deep fascia of thigh so going to the attachments of the deep fascia of thigh superiorly the deep fascia of thigh or fascia lata is attached to the inguinal ligament here this one is the inguinal ligament then it is attached anteriorly over the pubic arch pubic tubercle body of the pubis so this is the anterior attachment of the fascia lata laterally it is attached over the iliac crest then posteriorly it is attached over the sacrum then coccyx and then sacro tuberous ligament and ischial tuberosity so this is the posterior attachment of the fascia lata so superiorly fascia lata is attached over the inguinal ligament as you can see here inguinal ligament then pubic tubercle pubic pubis bone and the pubic arch so this is attachment of fascia lata anteriorly laterally it is attached over the iliac crest posteriorly to the sacrum coccyx sacrotuberous ligament and ischial tuberosity so this is about its superior attachment inferiorly it is attached over the exposed bones on the knee and then it is continuous inferiorly with the deep fascia of leg this is the fascia lata then continuous inferiorly with the deep fascia of leg so this is fascia lata 
attached superiorly over the inguinal ligament, pubic spoon, pubic tubercle, pubic arch, iliac crest, sacrum, coccyx, sacrotuberous ligament, ischial tuberosity. And below it is attached over the exposed part of the bone of the round knee. And then it is continuous with the deep fascia of the leg. Another point for this deep fascia or fascia lata is that just below the inguinal ligament. The deep fascia or fascia lata is receiving the attachment of the scarpa fascia. So scarpa fascia of the anterior abdominal wall is attached to the fascia lata just inferior to the inguinal ligament. So it is also receiving attachment of the fascia scarpa. So this is about the fascia lata. The more important point about the fascia lata are the these two things: iliotibial tract and saphenous opening. So we are discussing about deep fascia of thigh that is called fascia lata. It is attached to superiorly here, inferiorly here, and then continues with the deep fascia of thigh. So this fascia lata is having two important features. It is having laterally iliotibial tract and anteriorly it is having saphenous opening. So we are having these two things iliotibial tract and the saphenous opening. And before discussing these things we should discuss the inguinal ligament because they will be coming again and again so we should discuss what is inguinal ligament that it will be more better to understand these things so inguinal ligament before discussing the inguinal ligament we should discuss that this is abdomen and this is abdominal wall made by muscles and aponeurosis so anterior lateral abdominal wall here is having three muscles or anterior, we can say that anterior lateral abdominal wall is made up of three muscles and these three muscles are present in the form of layer. We are having superficially external oblique, below that we are having uh, internal oblique and then more below, uh, more deeper we are having transverse abdominis. So from outer side to inner side, uh, outer side to inner side we are having three layers of muscle, external oblique, internal oblique and transverse abdominis. Here we are only see, we can see the external oblique. Under them there is internal oblique and then transverse abdominis. So they are like in layers. Superficial, middle and deeper layer. So the superficial layer muscle is made up of external oblique. This external oblique is having here aponeurosis. The whitish color is the aponeurosis of the external oblique. This aponeurosis of external oblique is having two attachment inferiorly over here anterior superior iliac spine and on the pubic tubercle. So it is having two attachments over the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle. So there is a band formed in between two attachments. And the band is formed by the inferior margin of this external oblique aponeurosis. So this is all external oblique aponeurosis. Here it is inferiorly it is coming to attach over the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle. And here the band is free. So this inferior free margin of the external oblique aponeurosis is thickened and here it is making the inguinal ligament inferior free margin of the external oblique aponeurosis is thickened to form inguinal ligament so as you can see it is thickened free edge of the external oblique aponeurosis passes between the anterior superior iliac spine laterally and pubic tubercle medially Another point for the inguinal ligament is that it, its inferior free margin is thickened to form inguinal ligament and that margin is turning around itself making a 
can making a canal so it is turning on its inner aspect to make a path or canal that is called inguinal canal so this inguinal canal we can say is a dense pad consist constituting the inferior most part of the external oblique aponeurosis or we can say that it is a dense band that is formed by the inferior free margin of the external oblique aponeurosis is having two attachment towards the anterior superior iliac spine and to the pubic tubercle so this is the inguinal ligament another point here you can see this is more magnified image of the inguinal ligament this is anterior superior iliac spine this is pubic tubercle this is aponeurosis of the external oblique when it comes inferiorly it is thickened to form inguinal ligament and this when it is coming inferiorly it is also turning on itself making a path or canal that is called inguinal canal so here it is mar this margin is called inguinal ligament and the path on it inner on its inner aspect is called inguinal canal so this is inguinal canal so when the inguinal canal fibers are coming to our, uh, attach over the pubic tubercle some of the fibers of the inguinal canal uh, oh sorry inguinal ligament i'm telling inguinal ligament some of the fibers of the inguinal ligament are also coming to be inserted over the pectin pubis over the superior ramus of the pubis there is a line called pectin pubis here some fibers of the inguinal uh, ligament are reflected and inserted here these fibers are called lacunar ligament so this is the lacunar ligament a feature of part of the inguinal ligament so this was about the inguinal ligament then comes the iliotibial tract which is the main modification uh, which is the main topic that is a modification of the defacia of thigh so this is the iliotibial tract what is iliotibial tract it is the thickened par, uh, portion of the tens uh, uh, it is a thickening of the fascia lata on the lateral aspect so thickening of the fascia lata on the lateral aspect of thigh is called iliotibial tract what is happening some five uh, on when the fascia lata is coming on the lateral aspect <coughs> sorry some longitudinal fibers are here strengthening this fascia lata on the lateral aspect this is making the iliotibial tract you can say the thickening of the fascia lata on the lateral aspect of thigh is called iliotibial tract so what it is it is it is sharing or receiving the aponeurosis of the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus so the two aponeurosis are sharing with this making the iliotibial tract so this iliotibial tract is attached superiorly over the iliac tubercle and this is extending downward and this is in, attached over the tubercle on the lateral aspect of the tibia so this is the extension of iliotibial tract it is formed by the sheared fibers of the aponeurosis of the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus so it is going downward on the lateral aspect of the thigh and inserted over the lateral condyle of the tibia and coming from the iliac tubercle so this is iliotibial tract so what's the function of iliotibial tract it is in strengthening or uh, it, uh, the muscles and also when the knee is in a straight position the tract is maintaining the knee in the extended form so this is the function of iliotibial tract then comes saphenous opening this is fascia lata on the anterior aspect of fascia lata you can see uh, an opening this opening is actually a gap or deficiency in the fascia lata just inferior to the medial portion of the inguinal ligament now this is inguinal ligament this is medial portion of the inguinal uh, ligament 
inferior to the medial portion of the inguinal ligament on the anterior aspect of the facial liter there is a gap that is called saphenous opening and uh, the location of saphenous opening if we say it is 4 cm inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle and it is about 3.75 cm in length and 2.5 cm in breadth so this is the saphenous opening that is a gap or deficiency in the anterior aspect of the fascia lata just inferior to the medial portion of inguinal ligament and 4 cm inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle then we are having uh, uh, margins of the saphenous opening so this is magnified image of the saphenous opening this is the saphenous opening so this opening is having margins this is superior margin lateral margin inferior margin and these margins are very sharp as you can see here and they are making a crescent shape hence they are called falciform margin so they are falciform margin superiorly laterally and inferiorly they are more sharper while medially they are smooth and medially the saphenous opening is uh, covered from medial uh, medially by uh, these margins or we can say these margins are blending medially with fascia that is covering the saphenous opening and that fascia is called cribriform fascia as the name is indicating cribriform means sieve like so the sieve like fascia is covering the saphenous opening and why it is see why we are calling it sieve uh, cribriform or sieve like uh, because it is having many perforations and how these perforations are made these perforations are made by these <coughs> veins so this is the femoral vein this is receiving the great saphenous vein which is perforating the cribriform fascia to enter the femoral vein in the saphenous opening so this is the great saphenous vein along with the great saphenous vein its tributaries and uh, some lymphatic vessels from the superficial to deep lymph nodes are piercing this fascia that's why this is called cribriform fascia so this is the great saphenous vein which is entering through the saphenous opening into the femoral vein. This great saphenous vein is actually formed by the uh, uh, dorsal digital vein of the big toe and the dorsal venous arch. And then it is ascending upward anterior to the medial malleolus and then ascends posterior to the medial condyle of the femur and then it is ascending upward and then entering into the femoral vein by traversing through the saphenous opening so this is the great saphenous vein then another for the fascia lata another point for the fascia lata is that fascia lata from its deeper aspect is also sending some septa or from the deeper aspect of the fascia lata fibers are arising and they are at going they are making septa and going to be attached over the linea aspera of the femur dividing the thigh into compartments so from the fascia lata three intermuscular septa are arising from the deeper aspect and then they are going to be attached over the femur and these three intermuscular septa are dividing this whole thigh into three compartments anterior, medial and posterior. So this is anterior compartment, this is medial compartment of thigh and this is posterior compartment. Each compartment is having a own muscles, nerves and blood supply. So this was all about the fascia lata, its modifications and the inguinal ligament. Coming to the applied aspects of this class. So in this uh, applied aspect, we are having the iliotibial band syndrome and femoral hernia. So what is iliotibial band syndrome? 
Iliotibial band syndrome is actually the inflammation of the distal portion of the iliotibial tract. And this occurs due to continuous rubbing of the iliotibial tract against the lateral condyle of the femur. And the injury result due to the uh, overuse of uh, overuse such as in the continuous flexion and extension of the knee that may lead to the rubbing of this iliotibial tract distal portion and that can lead to the iliotibial band syndrome and in this the person feels pain on the outer aspect of the knee so this is the iliotibial band syndrome then there is a femoral hernia so before discussing the femoral hernia we should know femoral sheath femoral sheath is a sheath that is an extension of fascia from abdomen into the thigh that is covering the initial portion of the femoral vessels so this is femoral sheath you can see inner aspect that this one this is the femoral sheath femoral sheath is making compartments lateral compartment intermediate compartment and medial compartment lateral compartment is containing the femoral artery intermediate compartment is containing femoral vein and the medial compartment is containing just loose areolar tissue and lymphoid. and this medial compartment is called femoral canal femoral canal is a, a, is having opening called femoral ring so this is femoral ring and this one is the femoral canal May, uh, due to certain factors, the protrusion of abdominal viscera can occur through this femoral ring into the femoral canal. So, protrusion of the viscera can occur into the femoral canal. And when this viscera tend to enlarge, it can come out through this femoral canal into the saphenous opening and from saphenous opening it can come into the subcutaneous tissue so this condition is called femoral hernia it is lying inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle and inferior to the medial portion of the inguinal ligament so this is femoral hernia it is more common in females okay so this condition is called femoral hernia and it can tend to be uh, it can become dangerous as this femoral canal is having here medial boundary that is formed by lacunar ligament that is more sharp and it can strangulate this and may lead to the necrosis of this herniated sac so this is the femoral hernia so this was all about